Thank you, Manuel. Well, good morning, everyone. Um, thank you for this invitation and thank you for all the participants that have decided to share this space of debate um, uh, and thought around the nightlife in South Europe. I would also like to publicly uh, show my grateful with Jordi and Manuel uh, because it is not easy to organize and run an event of this magnitude, um, especially concerning the difficulties that the COVID-19 crisis has brought. Uh, so many, many things. And yesterday I listened to some excellent presentation as well, and I was amazed by how rich and thought-provoking can uh, nightlife studies be. So thank you also for the presentations that I that I that I could listen. Um, indeed, I, I, um, I attended Will's presentation yesterday and I really enjoyed it uh, because also I found many lines of thought in common. So I will try today to draw some lines, some ideas about which commonalities I found with Will's presentation. Uh, and I hope we can, discuss it. we can discuss them also at the end of this presentation. Um, my name is, sorry, I have, I haven't introduced myself. My name is Begoña Ramayona. I'm a PhD researcher uh, specialized in urban studies at, at uh, Autonomous University of Madrid. I have been working on issues such as um, marginalization, urban marginalization, informality, and security studies in Spain with a special focus on nightlife studies. Um, and during this last year and a half, I have been coordinating uh, a project called uh, Geographies of the Nocturnal City, uh, in which we compare the leisure practices uh, conducted by young people in Madrid, Barcelona, and Lisbon. And th this project has been especially useful in order to approach this issue of nightlife uh, from a South European scope. So I will base most of my, my insights on some of these empirical findings. However, today I'm going to present some thoughts uh, about a research project that I am currently writing with a colleague, Professor uh, Valeria Guarneros Meza, uh, who is based at the Center of Urban Research of Austerity at the Montfort University. And that we will present it as an individual fellowship proposal for the Marie Curie call this year. So this project uh, will be presented this year in September and it would be great to have your feedback uh, or your contact in case you, you, you find it interesting and you would like to be involved in some way. Um, okay, so as you can infer from the title of this presentation, one of its main objectives lies on exploring how the governance of the informal nightlife in South Europe is produced. I am very interested on the historical and cultural uh, representations of informal or precarious nocturnal actors in the South Europe region, um, who are often depicted by public discourse uh, in moral terms, uh, such as, I mean, they are depicted as dangerous and fearful creatures, uh, to be scared of. Um, so in this proposal we would like to test how these moral panics against informal nocturnal actors are specially intensified in times of crisis and how this cultural reproduction uh, through time is used to maintain uh, a certain public order in South European cities. Hence, uh, hence the pro this project aims to analyze how public discourses and moral panics uh, around these precarious workers who are very often also migrant people um, are produced in times of turbulent, turbulent times. And I have to thank Jordi for the idea of using this term, turbulent. So by turbulent, uh, I mean transition peri periods, uh, moments of crisis, crash or, and collapse, or to be more explicit, uh, moments in which urban neoliberalism and global capitalism struggles to survive, while at the same time being contested by many social and anti-capitalist or anti-austerity movements. So in this sense, I argue that some nightophobic narratives or artificial fears around the night 
are especially useful in times of change. And for the purpose of this presentation on this proposal, we are especially interested on two periods of crisis that have enormously affected the South European region, uh, the 2008 crash and current COVID-19 pandemic. So be before I start, let, let me share with you the structure of this presentation. Uh, first, I would like to start sharing with you some ideas about what aspects, questions and places might be relevant to include for a, an innovative uh, research agenda in nightlife studies, particularly in its relation with urban informality. You will see that this first section uh, contains many points in common with yesterday's presentation, Will's presentation, but also some differences that might be interesting to analyze. Uh, the proposal that I am presenting here is partially based, as I said before, on the empirical fieldwork conducted during these last five years as a night researcher and indeed as a devoted fan to the night for many more years. Uh, but it's also based uh, in my recent experience of being a mother of an eight uh, months old girl who has radically changed my experience of the night. And I like to say this not only to make more visible some sensitive issues around uh, how to balance work and life in, and care in current neoliberal academia, but also because it has helped me to reconsider the role of the night. Uh, the, vis the invisibility and underrated status of, of some works, uh, such as the work of caregiving in private spaces, which also occurs at night with or without a salary. Right? So due to these conditions that I just exposed, uh, I need to warn you that uh, what I'm going to present here is of course a situated and very unlimited uh, proposal. Um, uh, and I'm going to say with you some insights more in the form of questions than rather than affirmative statements. So please forgive me in advance and I will be very happy to, to receive your critical comments that I'm sure will be very relevant to improve this proposal. Uh, and on the, second, on, on the second section of this presentation, I would like to offer you a brief uh, view on a potential study of informal nightlife in South Europe, which is indeed part of this Marie Curie proposal that is going to be presented very soon. And in this section, I will share with you a description of the context of nocturnal informality in South Europe and what this has to say about the governance of Southern European cities in the present. Although this proposal is mainly based on the insight of a South European context, I hope some of these questions can resonate with your work and interest. I know there is a lot of, there are many Italian uh, researchers uh, on these audiences, so uh, I, I, I will be happy to, to receive your comments as well. Uh, so in relation to this uh, potential new research agenda in nightlife studies, I would like to describe four main points highlighting uh, some theoretical and empirical gaps that we have found in the literature of nightlife studies and I am sure that many of the research uh, presented in this congress are helping to reduce these gaps but um, I still I would like to share these four points. Uh, the first one is the need to pay attention to the particular cultural, political, economical and linguistical background uh, background in South European context uh, in any study of the night. This might seem common sense, but it becomes fundamental when we talk about uh, South or Eastern European regions uh, and also other global uh, countries that are currently leading some very interesting insights about the night, such as, well, the Middle East region or, or, or Southeast Asia, who's also uh, where, where, where there are very interesting also um, recent research about the night. Um, so paying attention to the particularities of these cultural and historical backgrounds will help us to go beyond some uh, apparently universal notions in nightlife studies. Uh, for example, the 24-hour model, uh, the different perceptions of uh, use uh, and meaning of public space or private space, the meanings of urban governance at night and so on. So beyond the risk 
of falling into romanticism. Uh, I think this is important, uh, like focusing in the South European context, this is, is important when trying to make sense of the potential Southern identity in Europe, which might have also uh, quite important political implications. Um, so in order to focus on this South European, South European con uh, context, we could include countries such as Portugal, Spain, Italy, or on also depending on which criteria we would use, we could also include France or Greece. For this proposal, we'll focus just on the first three. So I will, I will mainly talk about, uh, I mean, for this proposal, we're only using uh, as cases of study, big cities in Portugal, Spain, and Italy, particularly Lisbon, Madrid, and Rome. Uh, and although these three countries have, have many cultural, economical, and political differences, they also share some similarities that make it worthy to make these comparisons. So, for example, as the Greek, um, Greek researcher Lenti Du says uh, they all share um, a Mediterranean culture in which notions about spontaneity, joie de vivre, etc., are fundamental in, uh, to understand their popular culture. They, all, they also have suffered from authoritarian regimes during the 20th century, uh, and uh, they have experimented in many cases, unfortunately, uh, weak or uncompleted or failed transitions into democratic life. Uh, and finally, they have also been uh, recently impacted by structural forces uh, due to several financial, economical, and migratory crises, um, such as, for example, as I said before, the austerity policy suffered since 2008 crash uh, that it already affected, uh, they already lacks spatial planning policies. So in this sense, although, although with many differences, the promotion of nightlife economies through local policies in the last years, uh, which in the case of uh, South Europe, it is mainly an alcohol-driven nightlife and specially promoted or devoted to international tourism consumers, uh, has been a fundamental strategy in order to enhance economy and overcoming debt in South European countries. Uh, on the other hand, and unfortunately, these local nightlife promotions have also produced some side effects, negative side effects, such as the criminalization of specific nocturnal actors. And I will focus, as I said before in this presentation, in the case of, as I think I said before, sorry, in the case of uh, precarious, most of them migrant workers at night. The second proposition is to go beyond uh, the study of the night, focus on leisure spaces. Uh, this means that in order to nocturnalize urban studies, uh, we should incorporate a broad and profound picture in uh, of the night in cities. I think this idea is uh, shared with Will's proposal to trust, trust them or uh, to go beyond the study of the night as a place for pleasure seekers, as he said before. Um, so, very often, nightlife studies have focused on the consumption practices conducted in leisure spaces, such as drink and entertainments, local venues, bars, uh, clubs, and restaurants. And although the study of these places, I found it still fundamental, I think we also need to incorporate other urban spaces and practices to produce what the night researcher Robert Shaw, Shaw calls um, a real nightology or study of the night. So the, this also implies getting better understandings of what the night means beyond uh, classical definitions uh, based on time, such as, you know, for example, the nightlife is what happens after 6, 7, 8 p.m., which is something that you can still hear in some uh, debates, around, debates around the nightlife. Um, hence, you, you, to list some of the topics that might be studied in this broad understanding of nightlife, we could think about how the night is perceived and reproduced in different cultures along time, uh, how these different cultural imaginaries affect the governance of the city, which local actors are we often mm, in the civilizing in our studies, or even 
we could think about the night at home. As I said before, as Robert Shaw also proposes, how the night shapes a completely different atmosphere that is not only affecting our uh, behaviors, emotions, and practices at the public space, but also in the private space, and how the home can be a space of rest, play, but also a place of work such as uh, the domestic workers, which are part, uh, one of the cases of study that I would like to study. Um, so this last idea would be very much connected with the critics made by some feminist urban voices around the need to reformulate this division between, between the public space and the private space in, in urban studies. The third proposition of this research uh, agenda is to go beyond the study of formal nighttime economy center visions. Uh, given the prevalence of the economical dimension in the study of the night of nightlife, some other cultural and historical dimensions are often missed. Uh, luckily we have this Congress to, to overcome this overcome this 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 pity. But even if we center our view in, in this economical dimension, we argue that we need to pay attention to these blurred lines between uh, uh, informal and formal practices that are often found, uh, very, very often found in the nocturnal urban fabric, uh, not only in the south but also in the north, in the global north. This means engaging with re uh, recent debates around informality and Valeria Guarneros Meza is a great referent in this sense, in which informality is not understood as the opposite of formality, but we need to look at those two in relational terms. So by seeing informality as a continuum, uh, we could focus our attention on the role of many state and non-state actors collaborating to produce urban governance uh, at night, uh, including the role of, for example, private actors such as bouncers, uh, puertas o gorillas in Spanish, or even to the informal public and private partnerships, for example, the collaboration between, between public and private security forces, between residents and policymakers, or residents and the police, between local businesses and the police against racialized precarious people working or enjoying the night, and so on. And this last example that I just mentioned uh, helps me to introduce the fourth and final point around, point around this proposal on the new research agenda, the relationship between security and nightlife. We find that very often the night is depicted through metaphors uh, around light and dark that appeal to fear. And indeed, this urban fear is connected it is used as an argument uh, to produce urban changes in many cities. Hence, uh, we find that these nightophobic narratives or, or fear to the night or nightmares, uh, as I heard yesterday, which are understudied in the case of South Europe, are on one hand uh, permeated and accumulated uh, decades of history and many particular legacies, uh, cultural legacies in South Europe. And on the other hand, these nitrophobic narratives are currently permeated by increasing uh, racist discourses in which the intersection of uh, ethnic and gender dimensions plays a fundamental role. So new and old emotions against the night, such as fear, disgust, uh, which also has, has there's very interesting literature on disgust in the night, distrust as well, uh, are crucial to understand past and recent uh, urban changes in many South European cities. We argue that these changing affective geographies are operating as a set of arguments to produce processes of accumulation by dispossession, as uh, David Harvey would say, or if we want to highlight this spatial dimension of these exclusionary processes, how we could say how fear to the night contributes to processes of accumulation by displacement, to use the term used by, by the Spanish researcher Jorge Sequera. Um, so in relation to this Marie Curie proposal, we want to explore the combination of these four theoretical frameworks. Uh, in particular, we want to explore the intersection between three pillars, 
security, informality, and nightlife studies, trying to articulate these three with debates on urban governance. However, as we are still trying to figure out which would be the best model resulting from this combination, we are exploring whether this would be the best form to visualize uh, the relationship between these four fields, or on the contrary, uh, this would be would better represent the combination of these four fields. Uh, so in this second option, frameworks on nightlife, uh, informality and governance would be articulated by narratives on security, meaning that securitizing speeches and moves would cut across issues on the governance of nocturnal informal practices. In both cases, we aim to articulate these debates uh, across different disciplinary boundaries and transforming this research in a politically relevant project. So trying to engage key participants, civil society and policymakers in order to make space for underrepresented actors. Uh, so in this need of or desire of going beyond Anglo-Saxon formal economy and leisure center approaches, I have decided to focus on precarious nocturnal workers in the South European countries, uh, Portugal, Spain, and Italy. Uh, so such as, for example, sex workers, petty dealers, street informal vendors selling all type of cheap merchandising, roses, flowers, shoes and football t-shirts, uh, sunglasses, but also alcoholic drinks and food in nightlife spots. So this, what these works share is that all of them are frequently performed by transnational racialized migrants, particularly people coming from Central Africa, Bangladesh, China and South and Central America. But also in the last year, some white poor nationals have native, we could say, uh, have joined performing survival strategies at night due to increased poverty to, uh, due to recurrent crisis, this recurrent crisis that I mentioned before. Hence the night appears as an under-regulated time space in which these informal practices can be done. But beyond, what, what is more critical about all this picture is that beyond the diverse legislative uh, climates in each of these countries, what these informal workers or precarious workers often find when performing work at public space is the surveillance and hard hand. Hmm, it seems uh, we have some problems with the line. Uh, we're trying to get Begoña again with us. Uh, let us a couple of minutes. Uh, I'm called Begoña. Just in eso, Jordi, just in eso. Okay. Hi, can you hear me? Now you're back. Okay, sorry. I had a problem with the connection. I'm going to share it with you again. Um, Thank you. I, was I talking too fast or something? Or For me, it would be with pace. Okay. 
okay, I'm, I'm, I, I will use just 10 more minutes because I prefer to, to give space for the debate and the discussion. So, so I will be brief. Um, so, I, sorry, I was saying that um, what, what the, all these uh, precarious workers find in most cases uh, are these zero tolerance policies and hard hand strategies, which are based on constant surveillance of their practices uh, uh, when conducting work at public spaces. Um, and as you, as mm, I mean, and many unregulated migrants working at night face this uh, extremely hard reality uh, in South Europe, as you probably know. They are not allowed to work in formal conditions, they are surveilled and persecuted by the application of uh, immigration laws and citizen security laws and so on, um, and sometimes forcibly deported to their original countries and uh, as they are not able to get formal contracts, they are never allowed to regularize the legal situation. Uh, so it is a wheel of informality and, and, in, and surveillance for them. Um, so as you also know for sure that this is producing an extremely severe situation in South Europe. Um, indeed, as you can see in the picture uh, at the bottom of this slide, some of these nocturnal precarious workers are or, uh, organizing themselves, uh, creating new unions, claiming the need for the application of human and social rights, uh, the regularization of their legal status, which during this pandemic, Portugal was a reference uh, for this, and also asking uh, for um, the criminal, criminalizing them to be stopped. So in our proposal, just to, what? Okay, can you see this? Yes. yes. Okay. So in our proposal, we have selected four types of uh, precarious workers, um, with street wo informal street vendors, sex workers at public space, petty dealers and domestic uh, employees. Um, and as you can see in these slides, the, criter the criteria used to select these cases is, uh, well, first, they cover a diverse range of works uh, in the illegal, uh, legal, illegal, illegal continuum uh, to use Marx and Kelly in categorization of informality based on law. Um, and second, they, they also have to reframe this division uh, between public and private spaces, as some of these jobs are mainly performed in public spaces, whereas others, such as the domestic workers, uh, they work mainly at the private space. By the way, they, the um, international the uh, the international labor organization estimates that said uh, seventy percent of domestic workers in South Europe are working under unregularized conditions, 70 percent. Uh, that means without whether they, they don't have a formal contract or they, they work extenuating hours and so on. Uh, and especially interesting is the case of internal domestic workers, those who spend all the day and all the night uh, taking care of uh, people, families, child or whatever in inside the private space. Um, well, the third criteria is this uh, idea of the need of intersectional approaches. So uh, as I said before, for example, domestic workers and also sex workers are most of them women or in the case of sex workers, they also are trans women. And in the case of informal street vendors and petty leaders, as far as I know, at least based in, Spain, in the case of Spain, they most most they are they are men. Uh, this probably won't be fully true in the in other cases in other countries such as Portugal, for example. But we can discuss then uh, this uh, later. So the fourth criteria, and this is uh, an important also. Um, idea is that, uh, as I said before, people performing these jobs uh, have recently unionized around new organizations. 
in many of these cities, uh, with the only exception of petty dealers, as far as I know. So these unions, called in Spanish sindicatos, uh, are very much connected with social and urban grass grassroots and organizations, uh, and their demands are much more radical and multidimensional in nature than those exemplified by traditional labor unions. For example, the unions Sindicato de Manteros, Lateros de Unions uh, of Sex Workers and, and domestic employees such as Territorio Domestico that you see at the bottom, uh, they all share a uh, demand to cancel, to, 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 to cancel the immigration law and deportation. So this is something quite um, radical in the case of Spain, at least. Um, so uh, I think we all agree that there is a complex and intimate interplay between the diurnal city and the nocturnal city, or more specifically, the nocturnal informal city. Uh, in which many processes of invisibility, invisibility, resistance, reproduction, and reappropriation amalgamate to produce the governance of the nocturnal informal city. So taking these two statements, we can go one step forward and, and, and argue that um, not only the nocturnal city is under visibilized in urban planning and urban research, but indeed, uh, practices and policies of the nocturnal informal city uh, are used to govern the city as a whole. That means the diurnal city. Uh, we think it is important, this, this change of view is important because then it places the night as a central time space in order to understand the city and how the night is used to govern the whole city, not just the night. So this means that at least uh, in South Europe, the night is used uh, to govern the whole city. How? Uh, by producing specific fears and emotions that might serve to extol or loud the urnal and civilized citizenships. Um, this is made by reproducing, we think that this is made by reproducing public discourses that criminalize the dark and the obscure, which in the case in this case also includes racialized migrants and workers, but also uh, it, they also reproduce all traditional legacies, especially important to understand the South context in Europe, because these all conservative beliefs that have survived our failed or uncompleted transitions to democracy uh, in the South are currently interweaving or hybridizing with urban neoliberalism needs. And that is one of the reasons why these neoliberal demands are so well accepted uh, or accommodate so well with the common sense of many people in this country. Uh, in any case, uh, what seems to be critical in all this picture is that in the end, this whole cultural and structural apparatus against the disobedient night seems to serve uh, to maintain a set sense of control uh, and in times of crisis. Uh, hence, these nightophobic narratives, these imaginary narratives, um, imaginary nightmares, to use this metaphor that I heard yesterday, are used to smooth white middle class discontent uh, and fear against global capitalism by placing or moving these negative emotions towards these new artificial targets. Uh, hence, uh, hence, dark people and night mm, and, or not docile spaces at night uh, are currently operating, we think are, they are currently operating as, as um, scapegoats of global capitalism. So the night, the young, uh, the people who enjoy and have fun. So that means the lazy, the, the antithesis of the hardworking in figure in this criminalizing discourse. And critically, as I said before, these precarious racialized workers uh, being the, the last uh, link of this chain of responsibilities and guilt that this public discourse uh, tries to, 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 to share with us. Um, so, yeah, 
uh, sorry, I had to, <laughs> I should have uh, shared with you this slide before, but um, so in you, you see in this picture, the ones uh, on the left are uh, informal vendors in, in Madrid. Uh, once they, they, they in, in Spanish, the, there is a word which is la manta, which is like the, literally would be the blanket, but it's a, the, the thing that these informal vendors are, uh, put in the, in the ground in order to sell things. So as you can see uh, on the picture on the top of, on, on the right top. Um, and that picture was uh, taken during uh, the municipalist government in Madrid, which also places um, quite critical questions about the governance of the city, even in left wing, under left wing governments, uh, because one of the informal vendors was killed or was, or was uh, hit, died during uh, a police persecution. The picture on the bottom is uh, the new union around sex workers, which is based in Barcelona, but they also have connections with Madrid and um, Euskadi and other regions in Spain, who are trying to uh, take a space also inside the feminist movement and uh, trying to visualize their, their work as a work. And, uh, yeah, I think I'm going to leave it here. So thank you very much for your attention. Uh, I will be happy to comment any any topic that you would like to address. Uh, and thank you for being here. <laughs>